Welcome seniors. Just wanted to do a short presentation that you could watch at home about why we're studying British Lit your senior year of high school. Well, it's something we've been doing for a long time in America. It's just kind of tradition. Junior year, you study American Lit, and then senior year, you study British Lit. Last year, we did a little combination of both. Some CCP kids aren't taking any Lit this year, but those of you guys who are in a college prep, English 12 with me, we're going to be focusing on British Lit. I might bring in a little um, World Lit at some point, but the focus is going to be British Lit. Now, you might be asking yourself the question, and, it, and it's a good question. Why are we studying British Lit if this is America? It's a good question. And to answer it, you really have to focus on the historical background of our country. Remember that we were once a British colony. Great Britain in both the North in uh, the Massachusetts area, and then also in Jamestown in the South, we, those were British colonies. The people that were there did not view themselves as Americans because in the colonial times, America didn't exist. Now, as we know it, the United States, um, as time progressed, there was more of an American identity, but still British culture was a big part of who these people were. Now, a really obvious thing is language. You know, we speak English. Where does that come from? England. And the British English language influenced a lot of countries throughout the world. And so uh, when you go to like Australia, uh, New Zealand, uh, they speak English there. They also deal with, with British uh, literature and British culture as well. I once had an exchange student when I was in Virginia that went to uh, New Zealand for like a month. And, they, and we had a, a person from New Zealand come to our school. And when the, the American kid who went to New Zealand came back, said, wow, it's crazy. We were studying some of the same stuff that we studied here in, in the United States. And I said, yeah, well, we have the same language. So language is a big, big part of this whole thing. And, then, and that brings us to the third thing, which includes language, and that is culture. Um, British culture influenced American culture greatly in the beginning uh, before we became the United States because they identified as, as British people. British subjects. And then eventually that that started to wear off as people were born here. Their, and, and they had never been to England. Their identity kind of changed over time and eventually it led to American independence. And American independence, we officially said, we're no longer um, British subjects anymore. But that didn't stop the cultural influence. The cultural influence of Great Britain continued for a long time. Some people speculate that really the first unique American writer was Mark Twain, who was a 19th century writer. So we're talking about 100 years and still British culture is influencing uh, American culture, even though we are separate countries. And what do we mean by culture? Well, number one, religion uh, and, and language. You know, we were primarily Protestant uh, and, and of Anglican sort, which you know, especially in the South when we we're colonial, and then that same and the Puritanism that was transplanted from uh, England to Europe over here was was in the North. But so in religion, we we're very similar to to Great Britain. Um, language, we spoke the same language. Um, when it came to literature, <laughs> we read British lit in America for a long time, for a long time. Shakespeare is a is a big part of American culture. In fact. The largest Shakespeare Museum, I believe, in the world is in Washington, D.C., the, um, the Shakespeare Museum that's there. So it's a, an important part of who we are as Americans. And then when you go on to law, like the practice of, uh, I believe it's common law in Great Britain, we incorporated some of these same types of things. And then also the idea of, of representative government. We didn't create that idea in, in the modern sense. Britain did it before us with Parliament. We just took it a step further. And so there's all kinds of things, literature, language, law, religion, customs that we carried into American culture. So it's, it's hard to look at American culture, especially in the early, um, early hundred years or more. It's hard to look at it and, and see it completely separate from Britain. You got to look at the mother country, as, as a lot of people would call it, and the mother tongue. A good example of this is in our town, which we dealt with last year. In our town, 
when they talk about the cornerstone, what do you, you know, if we want to figure out in early 1900s, what, what's representative of America is the, the constitution of the United States, the New York times, the national newspaper, um, the local Grover's corner Sentinel, uh, the Bible, a copy of Shakespeare's plays. And then he says, throw an art town in there, but Shakespeare's plays, is as American as you can get. And so that we're in the 1900s and they're talking about that. I wanted to give you a little background to why we're doing this and hopefully this video helps. We're gonna be looking at some other stuff to in class. I'm gonna look at some stuff dealing with language from the story of English that'll help us to see the connection um, to uh, our British roots. Not that we are British anymore, but we do have British roots and to kind of understand who we are. We got to go sometimes and, and look back at those. So I hope this is helpful to you guys. You guys have a great day.